Hey guys, this is Neri Castillo Crawford, uh, the author of 3,585 Miles to Be an American Girl. I am super tired, but I'm also super excited to kind of just touch base with you today. I hope that you have had a great weekend. Um, in week. Uh, we had spring break here, so I've literally been relaxing and being super busy, kind of like simultaneously, if that can be achievable. So usually we start our um, session by talking a little bit about how you can get in touch with me. So the email is 1010publishingus at gmail.com. The phone number is 470-440-0018. Uh, I am on Facebook and on Instagram under 1010 Publishing, 1010 Publishing. Um, yes, and then you can also find me on Twitter at RLNUNUCC and at 3,585 Miles to Be an American Girl and what else oh yeah so i do have something to show you it's a story about behind these but it's i got some business cards <laughs> i thought we were like way past business cards until i went to a conference at the latin american association and realized not so much i really needed them so i have some business cards made and I've already used a couple of them. I just got them recently. So well, let's talk a little bit about immigration facts, a little bit about publishing your book, getting you started or continuing to work on your book. And um, then I'll share a recap of what I've been doing and some things that I'm going to be doing. So immigration, there's still a lot of talk about immigration here um, lately in the news. It just feels like every time I turn around, there's something going on with immigration. But I just want to make sure that we're all clear with facts. Um, immigration has literally been on a downhill trend since 1972, with the exception of the influx that we received from Central America with some young students, uh, students, not children, who were, well, I don't think they were students, but anyway, who were escaping gang-related, uh, violent environments. Um, and also, in recent years, uh, our neighbors from Mexico, there have been more people um, from Mexico leaving, going back to Mexico than they have been incoming from Mexico. So just saying, just wanted to share that kind of stuff with you. Um, all right, so my nephew Noah, and I don't know if he's watching this, maybe he is, I told him to watch the videos, is thinking about writing a book. It's fictional. Um, and I'm not going to spoil it for him, so I'm not going to tell you what it's about. But anyway, he, he has a thought for a book, and the advice I gave him, which I think it's relevant and um, it can be aligned to any author, is that you have to be writing. You have to take a little notebook with you and write morning, noon, and night type thing. Um, you got to fit it in, and you have to be thinking about writing. Um, a lot of writers, you know are pretty much like in solitude a lot. They have to get their mind right and start, they think about writing so much. I'm a social butterfly, so that's kind of hard for me, but I do think a lot about the stories that are in my head, and I have a little um, notepad that I do keep notes on. So, and then I've also, on my wall, I have a big chart paper where I'm starting to take some notes on there too. So you just gotta be writing all the time. Um, so that's my advice um, for this week is that if you are serious about writing, you have to start somewhere. So you start taking the notes that you have. Like I shared before, my personal experience is 
the formatting, even the title can be finalized at the end. I mean, we have to get, you know, your characters, your plot, the conclusion kind of in your head, like the storyline has to be in your head and then you could fill, fill it in as details come. And don't feel like you have to know everything. You know, you might, depending on the genre of your book, you might have to do some more research, you know, and if it's a realistic fiction type of book, you might have to, you know, take time to add some more details um, to make your um, your story flow and become, uh, and, you know, come to fruition to what you want it to be. So keep writing, guys. Um, also hit me up if you have any questions about how to get your book published. Um, early January, one of the sessions that we had was about the three different types of publishing that you have um, at your disposal. Um, so you don't necessarily have to go with self-publishing, although a lot of people are doing that nowadays. You also had, have hybrid publishing and you have traditional publishing. So check those videos out um, or those blogs out if you want some further information about that. Um, so like I said, this week was spring break. Um, I was in Gadsden County, Florida. And I tell you, those kids were amazing. I went to Greensboro Elementary School and I went to West Gadsden Middle School, who um, houses grades four through eight, which is quite interesting. I loved it. Um, you know, when I schedule schools, I try to give myself some time in between because, you know, I don't know how traffic's going to be and et cetera, but it was amazing. Like, literally, it's very rural and it's literally across the street from each other. And I thought that was awesome. I was like, I literally have like an hour. <laughs> Should have like crawled over there, waste some time. But um, the, both the schools were fantastic, great staff, and the kids were amazing. So shout out to all the kids and Greensboro Elementary School and um, at West Gaston Middle School. Um, I had a good time speaking with them and sharing my story and the book. Uh, and uh, Dr. Maria Pouncey um, is over the um, ESOL and migrant programs there in Gaston County. And she hosted the, the whole visit and it was just great. I really appreciated all of the hospitality and all of the love um, at both of the schools. Um, what else? Uh, Okay, so prior to that, I did go to um, the Latin American Association Women Empowerment uh, Entrepreneurship Conference. I met this gentleman. His name is Robbie Wells. He tells me that he's going to be running for president in 2020. He bought my book. So that was pretty amazing. Um, and so, yeah, I look forward to learning about him and, you know, just seeing what um, what his agenda is going to be and what his track record shows about supporting um, all citizens. Um, so we'll see. I look forward to learning about him and, and seeing how we can um, all move forward. So if you don't know him, you might want to check him out. I found him on social media, on Twitter and on LinkedIn. And I think I found him on Facebook too. Uh, and he has a page. He has a page. So uh, check him out. Check him out um, and see if you can learn something from him. Keep up with him. Uh, I got my hair cut. I got my nails done today. I was totally in need of that. <laughs> I've been running around like a mad woman. <laughs> Um, I got a confirmation email today and I will be going to Leon County Schools on May the 14th and I'm super excited. Yay, I get to um, get with some kids there too and I just look forward to seeing some more kids. So that's um, amazing. And um, today I met with um, uh, one of the leaders for Galeo and it's a... Uh, organization and nonprofit organization here in Georgia in the metro Atlanta that um, supports and develops leaders Latino leaders and so I had a great conversation and I look forward to collaborating with Galeo um, 
and seeing how we can all support um, the leaders and ultimately, you know, support all of our children in education. It's very important that we support um, our kids because children are literally our life's biggest investment. Um, so we definitely need to focus on the children. So, um, when was it? Tuesday? Wednesday? I can't remember anymore. Tuesday, yes. Tuesday, I was um, on a radio podcast with Dr. Sharon, um, Leadership Matters. She's amazing, and she's a great leader, and she had a lot of good advice and conversation. I truly enjoyed um, connecting with her and just having conversations about schools, and we did talk a little bit about the book as well. Um, so I totally appreciate her uh, providing me the platform to share about my journey as a leader and, and as well as my journey as an author. So shout out to Dr. Sharon. Uh, she and I met through LinkedIn. So she loves social media. You get to meet some amazing people. Um, and I love that. So, all right. I'm hoping that you get some writing done um, this week. Uh, I'm trying to wrap up my second book quickly because um, I did say I was going to have it wrapped up by May and May is soon approaching. I do need three, maybe four volunteers. So please contact me if you're interested. I need three to four volunteers, not for technical errors. We will have someone check that out. But I need three or four volunteers um, to read the manuscript uh, and give me some feedback. So if you are available, please hit me up at 1010publishingus at gmail.com or send me a text or call me at 470-440-0018. Hit me up on Facebook. I'm at 1010 Publishing uh, and Instagram as well and on Twitter at R-L-N-U-N-U-C-C in 3,585 miles to be an American girl. So hit me up. I really need your help. Um, last but not least, I went to Costa Verde. Costa Verde. I almost said it in an American way. Costa Verde. It is off of Buford Highway in Norcross. It is a Peruvian restaurant. And when I tell you, I don't know if it was A, I was starving, or B, the food is just that delicious. Presentation is everything. And it was that I saw the dishes coming out and they were very nicely put together. Uh, Spanish cuisine. I had causa con pollo. And I ordered a papa rellena. I ordered picarones, uh, which are like these handmade little donut things, fried. Anything fried is yummy, right? And papa rellena is like a stuffed potato. So it's like a mashed potato. And so they cup it up and then they put the stuffing, like the steak and the onions and everything in there. And they, they put it back together, like mold it back like a potato and deep fried. So the picarones and the papa rellena are both deep fried. And anything deep fried's got to be good, right? It is. So I totally ate that. I ate the casa, um, which is also a potato cold-based salad dish. Uh, and remember, I shared with you that potatoes originated in Peru. So we have like tons of potato dishes and dishes that incorporate potatoes in them. Uh, so it got that, and then I had alfajores, which are these little white, they're white cookies because they're they're rolled into very uh, thin, delicate powdered sugar. So they're like these little very flaky uh, pastries, thin pastries, and you cook the condensed milk so it becomes like a, a thick paste, a brown paste that's very, very sweet. And so you spread it on the cookie on, and then you, you know, you have two cookie pastries and then you close them up, of course, and then you roll the whole cookie onto this, you know, powdered sugar. It, yeah, obviously you realize that I've, all I've had was like sweet stuff and potatoes today. Anyway, totally worth it. And I love it. And I don't live near this restaurant. Um, 
but I'm seriously considering relocating. Like I'm sure I could get like an apartment or something, or like really close, just walk down there every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I don't know. <laughs> I'm saying that and I actually like living in the suburbia world. It's so peaceful here. And in the summer, I'll be doing my blogging by the pool with a, maybe an adult libation or something. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I truly enjoyed talking to you tonight. And I'm sorry it's been so long. I couldn't do it. It was just so much going on. Anyway, I will talk to you soon. Have an amazing rest of your weekend. And have an even more amazing week. Make things happen. Choose your attitude in everything that you do because in life we cannot control anything except our attitude. I keep saying that. And hey, listen to your kids if you have kids. Read to your kids. I read to mine even when they were in high school and they actually like it. So that's my advice. All right. Talk to you soon. Hit me up, guys. Bye.